Did you see anything out there? Be quiet, Victor. We saw the mistress. She came this way in a black rage. So what else is new? So, how do we bring this thing down? We've gotta stop them from releasing this shroud. Well, we can't be sure. It's my best bet that we can locate the machinery powering this thing's output of shroud. If we can sabotage those systems, we should disable this tower. Ah, here's something for you, Rain. Seems your playmate is headed for the roof. Hear that, Feral? I'm coming to get ya. Look at that, the game itself providing its own convenient little reminder of where we last left off. And drops us right back into combat. For better or worse. This thing will explode under the right circumstances. And land on one of the guys. So that leaves us one last victim to play with. Something I just learned, and will be showing off later in this video, is uh, when you've got an enemy grabbed, you press one of the face buttons, you instant kill them. But if you press the grab button again, and then one of the face buttons, you will do an alternate execution, which has its own unique animation. So we're gonna have to do a lot more executions in this video. Also, I'm gonna try and grab one of these guys from behind, because I've never done that before. It will, at the very least, have a different animation from uh, what we just saw there. I hope. But we do have to lure him into it and then attack. Hey, look at that. So there's the kick execution for when you got someone grabbed from behind. Throws them a million miles away. Here's the alternate blade execution. Pin him down, stab him right in the heart. It is very, very fast. It gives you less resources than the full execution, but it's very fast. And the alternate kick execution, which is so cool. We smashed that guy's head right off of his neck. <laughs> so that'll be nice. Another way to speed up the pacing. I sure wish the game had told me that this was a thing. Play a little ring around the rosy to try and grab guys from behind. It's very difficult to do. Unless they're reloading. Uh, lathed. That's my new favorite execution in the game. We just <laughs> impale them, then spin them around. Chop off every single extremity. Good stuff. And laser fast. But now we have to fight a foreman here in the rafters. Foremen are still not a very difficult fight, but we basically can't get hit because we'll get knocked off the edge. And it's Super Mario rules, where if we fall from a location, even if we know there is ground below us, because we've been on that ground earlier, it still counts as a, not death, but uh, It'll make us respawn with less health, so... Blood Rage, we can't afford to get knocked around. And we can't get knocked around when we're raging. Also, it'll make this go faster. It's like painting something red. It goes faster. And Rain loves red. Anticlimactic conclusion every single time. And there was some kind of like ghost fog that it was showing us there. That was what was stopping us from grabbing this pole. Yeah, that's never really been a thing before. That particular foreman was generating an anti progress field. I gotta remember that the eager guys always have a little stick to hit me with. There we go, the alternate kick execution. 
So that means there are four kick executions, four of the stabbing executions, and then two gun executions. I uh, forget what to do here. That's a good sign. I thought it involved breaking that uh, console, but apparently not. There are just two levels. Nice. Oh, there are also two neutral executions for just hitting the X button while you got someone grabbed. There are a lot of executions, it turns out. You're ghost feeding the wrong guy. That's fine, we'll just get some gun experience. With our terrible, terrible pistols. I did mean to do a gun execution there, but we needed more rage anyway. Someone with a shotgun hurt briefly there. So that's how we got here. As always, level layout, very confusing. Yep, there we go. Just out of sight is what we needed to grab. Okay, that guy was full of explosives. And at some point, something over here is going to explode. I just know it. There it is. Yeah, they got something pushed up against the door. And all those guys with guns will inevitably hit it with something. Just automatically generate carnage for us. This will probably happen again right around here. Nope, this door is impenetrable. So instead, we'll head up here. There's a nice hole in the roof. Carefully scripted execution moment. See, when I did this in my practice run, that guy not only um, fell all that distance, he also landed on one of the explosive barrels. And, uh... Yeah, he died like a thousand times over. He still died three or four times over this time. But it is slightly disappointing compared to the other one that I didn't record. And we're done with that section. Time to go to another near identical section. We will get a few gun level ups in this video. Or more likely one gun level up. But it's better than none. We've only had one previous video where we had a gun level up, so... Some enormous machinery and some pumps. They must be pushing the shroud up the length of the tower. See if you can find a way to disable them. Gas bags are, uh, distributing the shroud. The human meat mist that we failed to stop them from making in the previous videos. So we got a killing puzzle. But first, we're gonna refill our resources, because these guys are completely unarmed. Just begging to be drained of blood. Are we really so different from our enemies, who also drained the entire city of blood? That guy slipped in the pool of blood we left behind. I was unable to find any vampire rooms in the entirety of this level. 
So, this is one of our few opportunities to safely recharge basically everything we're gonna need. That said, that is a good thing about this level. There generally are not too many significant drains on our resources throughout this one. We do get to play around a little bit. Have some fun for a change. But for now, we gotta try and get these guys on the pipes. And when the pipes are shooting gas, we can't uh, impale people on them because they will propel them away. And we got a carnage upgrade too, in the process. So it shoots people out the exhaust port. He's too close, so that's not gonna work. Now it should work. Nope. I think it's always expelling gas. There we go. He didn't go in the, uh... Huh. That's weird. This was much more scripted in my practice run. I had no trouble with it whatsoever. Let's see if this one works. Okay. Right in, as it always should be. Okay, that one's not gonna work. And one or two more should do it. Oh, just one. There we go. So once again, the game has pretty much uh, dramatically improved over the terrible previous level. It remains reliable that every other level is quite good. That killing puzzle certainly worked a lot better than all the ones in the previous level. Oh, you boys came all the way up here just to see me? Well, I can't disappoint you. We can hear a helicopter flying around in the distance. And not for any particularly good reason. Just be aware that there is a helicopter. The idea of a helicopter exists somewhere off screen where they don't have to animate it. Did you even see that coming? That's everyone. I'm out of here. But not without a little parting. Yeah, for some reason, the helicopter pilot shoots a missile at the Shroud Tower to help us. Kind of feel like they just didn't have any better idea for a progression. So they arbitrarily blocked off that one area until we killed the foreman, which the helicopter pilot magically knew about. But now, since he's done that, we can jump on these grates and head further up the tower. This ridiculously tall tower. We actually have an elevator that we can walk around in. Not a cutscene elevator. What is the world coming to? Where Blood Rain lets you play the game. More platforming with actual enemies this time, throwing grenades at us. If they feel it get near the edge, we can return fire. But they don't. But that means they can't hit us, so just as well. Now they can, though. Super 
super awkward layout. This was quite the pain to figure out the first time I tried this. I guess the whole tower's in disrepair since it got shot with that missile. If we had a few more foreman boss fights, we wouldn't have to do anything to take this thing down. Random passing pilots would destroy it for us. For the hell of it. Up, oh, we will jump off the edge during some canned animations, which I could not control. Because they got this one put together with floorboards. Which inexplicably exploded. <laughs> There are a lot of random explosions in this level, which lead to really cool death scenes. Because people fall tremendous distances as they die. And that's gonna heal the ah! Our blades are just hilariously useless at this point. want to bother this guy. So I won't. You can just stay there. And I'll hit that and you can uh, just fall a great distance without reacting at all. This is an extremely long tower that we have to climb up, but it is all in one loading zone, impressively enough. And they don't cut it up with secret loading cutscenes every 10 seconds. So on a technical level, a much better implemented level than the previous one. Top off our ammo. And do some more generic climbing. They did only build like three or four room assets, and then they just repeatedly use the same ones over and over again. We'll live. Almost jumped right off the edge there. And on to the next. Same room we've seen twice already. It's slightly different this time. The poles are in a different place. So close to that level up. Of course, vampires would make a gigantic mechanical heart to do their techno evil. And they would throw giant hammer wielding guys right into that uh, mechanical heart so as to help us break it. So we gotta lure the foreman into smashing all these nodes. 
He's usually pretty happy to do so, but the hitbox is uh, terrible, as you just saw. Slammed his hammer down, and then 10 seconds later, the thing broke open. You gotta make a withdrawal from the blood of it. Yeah, this guy is not very easy to manipulate, and most of his attacks will hit you from a mile away. Rather, he is very easy to manipulate, but he's not good at swinging directly at you. Okay, he finally broke that one open. Ugh. And then he hit me from a mile away. And I died with considerable health at my health bar, thanks to my ghost feeding. I'm beginning to see the Wish they'd given us one of those guys from the loading screen there. The uh, Horned Face Gargantuas, I believe, is their scientific name. Because those you can just matador around. Very easy to manipulate. Unlike these foremen. That was interesting. I believe the, uh, the guy's body opened the thing, which gives me an idea. Okay, didn't work. We'll just do this last note the right way. But it might be possible to throw people into the nodes to break them open. The foreman just makes it too much of a pain in the ass to even try. But we do have to throw them into the nodes once they're open, because now it's a killing puzzle. Wish we could grab this second hammer, have a hammer off with the foreman. Damn, I'm gonna go to slow. Ugh. Our uh, harpoon animation is very, very long, and the foreman loves to punish it. How would you go for that guy? The lock-on is terrible in that it never goes for the nearest enemy, it always goes for the one that is closest to directly in front of you. Which could be the foreman, which would be useless. Okay, we're going very fast now. And there's no enemies in the right area, so that's a waste. Okay, there we go. We'll use our super speed so we can't get interrupted. Throw that... Why didn't he go into the goddamn node? This game... Even when the level design is improved, the mechanics just don't work as intended. And the mechanics are good in this game. They've been improved so much from the first game. They would be very good if they just worked. Okay, we're finally done. Heart dumps its guts all over the foreman. We get to move on. We are gonna need a lot more resources. And like I said, no vampire rooms, as far as I can tell. Vampire rooms are completely optional. There are at least two that I know of in previous levels that we missed. Like, if you remember, there was a room back in the sewers where we were chasing after a hostage, and right when we got to the hostage, the minion who was carrying him uh, executed him with a shotgun. There was a waterfall of sewage in that room, and behind that waterfall of sewage was a vampire room. Because even a waterfall of sewage is a waterfall, 
And in a video game, there has to be something special behind a waterfall. Oh, we missed that one. And there was another one in a later level. There might be one in this level, but I highly doubt it. So I played pretty much this entire level with Aura Vision on, which is how you find the vampire rooms. Fairly complicated room here with the platforming, but no threats along the way. So you have all the time in the world to figure it out. No pressure to trick you into screwing it up. Now there's an enemy, but he's just throwing grenades. Uh, I believe that was the incorrect thing to do. Let's try this again. Just had to ignore that other pole. And there we go. Right as rain, you might say. This tower just keeps on going. Sure, there's more foremen. Maybe we can kick that one into the fan he's standing in front of. We can't. That fan is just for dramatic effect. I'm gonna need a lot of rage. That'll do. See if your master can put back together. There is very, very subtle, like, action music playing right now, and I'm just noticing it for the first time. That's one thing they could have learned from Devil May Cry, is to really crank up the guitars when you're in a really any sort of fight. But no, the ambient drowns out the guitars at this point. They are that subtle. Up. Didn't see the pipe. So close to that level up. Feels like I'm finally getting the hang of these dragons. There we go. Used my own blood to top off that experience bar. Didn't see that hole in the ground. But now when we reload, it will give us considerably more ammo. Let's see. 32 shots. I believe that's... Yep. I think 65 is our cap, but it brings us to 64. And that is a lot compared to what we're used to. Our machine gun still eats through it like it's nothing. To be expected. This guy is gonna... blow up that tank any second now. Gotta avoid the fiery corpses. And the fire does linger long after the visual effect of the fire has gone out. So just stay away from anyone who's ever been on fire. I'd love to level up the blood bomb, but that would take a thousand shots, because even with our highly upgraded ammunition at this point, our max ammo for the blood bomb is four shots. So we simply will not be using it very much. Hmm. 
Another identical room. Completely pointless this time. Just elevator to elevator. I'm trying to remind us that this tower is about 10 miles high. We're nearing the thousandth floor of this place. And Severin has some great advice. Run. Uh, because there are tons of automated machine guns firing at us. They don't lead their shots, but the minions all around us will try to slow us down. I'm just not dealing with it. Get me out of here. We could use the slow down time thing. Bullet time would have gotten us out of there nice and safe. Just as well. With our normal running speed. We can take enough bullets that we don't even care. The benefit of being half vampire. And on to the next section. That entire thing was one section of the game. One loading room. Pretty well done. And I guess this means we are at the top of the tower where we will face Feral. Our hated foe who has no personality whatsoever. But in the meantime, look at this. This is nice. I mean, it's obviously PS2. This, like, body of water beneath us looks pretty bad, but... I don't care. Overall, it looks great. It does sort of look like the buildings are emerging from the water. Probably not intentional. Just the ground texture looks like garbage. Nonetheless, I love it. And I will complain about the things that I love, because that's what I do. Kind of wonder what city this is supposed to be, because... There is... A very distinctive bridge over this way. It's... Every City USA. I assume it's USA, but our villains... I don't know if they imported them or something, they do not seem especially American. Beautiful. The world's my jungle now. I'll show you, Kagan. They'll all fear my name. I don't think so. I'm tearing this tower down. You'll be stuck with four city blocks of rubble, if I even let you out of here alive. And I'm not feeling real friendly. Ah, corpse sucker! Half thing! Do you really think you can interfere with this? Sure I do. Otherwise, this would have all been a waste of my time. Anyway, I've already shut down your dumb tower. I'd say I'm just about done. Yeah, I think Farrell's going for like a generic Cold War Russian voice villain sort of thing. But it is hard to tell. She might just be trying to be angry in a way that is unconvincing. <laughs> but it's our big boss fight against Feral. She's got plenty of backup. She is probably the best visually designed character in the entire game. And when you hit her, like... All the little wavies on her skin, they surge through her body for a nice, cool visual effect. Gotta make a withdrawal from the blood bank. She is actually well designed in a visual sense. God, Very poorly designed character. In like a writing sense. You know, the thing that makes a character a character. No one believes that we should actually be fighting Feral. As the cutscene heavily indicated, we are meant to go destroy the pumps. Feral be damned. This is not actually our boss fight. So we're supposed to ignore her. Go for the 
Leviathan crosses scattered all around the place. And smash them. Pharaoh will try to make that as difficult as possible. Combo the hell out of me there. Pin me right to a wall. But that's fine. Now we know to ignore Feral. Now we'll do this the right way. Probably start by topping off my health. Because when we are uh, up in the tower, breaking the shroud, uh, shroud generators, we will continuously lose health, even if Feral's not around us. For some reason, the shroud just doesn't work. Because it's being generated. It's why we are able to stand in the sunlight right now. But as soon as we go into the shroud personally, it just stops working. That'll do. Try and get a little distance from Feral. It's not very easy. What you usually got to rely on is the fact that our pathing is really bad. We'll go over to the other side. She can't do the acrobats. Oh, yes, she can. Never mind. We'll figure out something, though. Another one down. Probably have to take a pit stop to recharge pretty soon. But we might get one more generator down in the meantime. It looks like we really tricked Feral into not following us this time. Feeding time. My thoughts exactly, Rain. Up. Oh. Feral's here. Make feeding a pain. <laughs> so from here we can go up the that way. Whoops. Guys falling all over the place. Trying to get at us. Huh. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you are going to need a little more health. There's supposed to be like five constantly respawning guys here. Here comes one now. And this should get us where we need to go. And then we'll head back up the tower. Probably the last pit stop we'll need to make. So yeah, this section is pretty irritating though. In my first run, Feral got stuck inside of one of the staircases. And after a certain point, she just stopped bothering me entirely. Maybe that'll happen again. We can only hope. That one goes down, so we want this one that I cannot hit for the life of me. <sighs> this one is my fault. This is not as hard as I'm making it out to be. 
But even in the best case scenario, it is pretty tedious because look at how many Leviathan crosses there are. We need to go destroy all of them. And they do all take, like, 10 hits. With our fairly slow combo. No amount of getting chased by Feral is making it any more interesting. Okay. One of the exhaust pipes is down. And unfortunately, I do have to back out early. Barrel's just done too much damage. And her minions, of course. Yeah, kind of stings, huh? Back over here, she'll probably be right on my back any second now. Not fast enough. Just barely not fast enough though. Honestly, the pacing was better when I managed to glitch Feral out of the fight entirely. Because I was able to just go from platform to platform. Do what I needed to do. She uh, did some poor platforming herself, so she'll be out of the way for a couple of seconds. Long enough to take out another exhaust pipe. That should just leave one remaining, and it's right over here. Can we take it out before she gets back? Even if she does come back, I'll just pop Rage. She won't be able to stop me. That should do it. Nice. We destroyed an entire tower. We were a little careless in the process and knocked ourselves off the edge. My wetworks ruined. My proud tower crippled. Who is responsible? It was a Dampier assassin. Why didn't you send help to stop her? Damper assassin. What in the black stone heart are you yammering about? Well, who do you think caused all this? Ephemera? Tell him! Oh, boiled saints, Ephemera. You never reported the Dampir. You kept her a secret. You let her get this close. You treacherous, motherless bitch! You're loving this! You set me up! Feral. We no longer have need of your services. <laughs> hmm. Quicker than I remembered. A shame. You might have amounted to something. Throw out the trash. Ephemera. Backstabbing for a backstabber. Poetic, right? You're stronger and faster, Feral. You are. But I'm just a little more clever. 
Maybe trusting me wasn't your best idea. The rogue Dampier! I know. Thank you for removing her. Oh, this isn't over! Oh, sister. It most definitely is. Turn the minions who can. Destroy the rest. The time is at hand. Flood the sky with shroud, that I may stride my kingdom at will as a true emperor. Your will be done. Of course it will. That's some strong blood. It's Kagan's all right. You don't seem as upset as I expected. Upset? I'm excited. If Kagan's walking around again, it means I get to put him down myself. Finally. Hell, I'm beside myself. Um, you might want to see this. Awkward interruption to get a new power-up. Maybe we should use freeze time right now and uh, do something about the problem that's about to occur. The charges are all slitty. He's impatient and he wants a big show. And you tell my mongoloid brother and his goons to get undercover because the world is about to cave in on them. The dawn of the vampiric age. I said a bunch of times in the last video that it felt like we failed because the vampires had already ground up the entirety of the lower class of the city. Now we just have actually failed, and the vampires win, and the city's over. This is very bad, isn't it? Worse than that. You did everything right, Rain. You took out the tower, but we failed to stop the Shroud itself. Vampires are free to walk in daylight. They're unstoppable. What does Brimstone advise? <sighs> Brimstone's gone. They're just offline or completely wiped out, I can't tell. The result's pretty much the same either way. I'm out of a job. So we're on our own, here at the end of the world. Kagan is alive. It looks like it. Well then, as far as I'm concerned, I'm still on the clock. You with me? Of course, but I've been thinking. We could try to escape to the wilderness. Uh, between us, with our skills, it, it's likely we could survive. Maybe find other survivors. But we aren't going to do that, are we? Uh-uh. I'd say no. We're going to continue to track Kagan. That's the plan. He's a god. Even though civilization has crumbled in less than four hours, and all hope is definitely, unquestionably lost. Now you're talking. I like that attitude. It's gonna take you places. Yeah, I'm terrified that it will. 
I now understand why there's a company that bought up the Blood Rain IP and is trying to revive it right now. That series of cutscenes was 2020s as hell. <laughs> we just witnessed the end of the world. Brain has no reaction whatsoever. Because she's still on the clock. Might as well carry on to business as usual. What are you going to do about it besides try and be the biggest thorn in the side of the assholes who just ruined the entire world as you possibly can? I respect it. I like it a lot. I like Rain a lot more as of these most recent cutscenes. Because one, she no-souled the revival of Kagan. It's supposed to be a big twist, but uh, obviously we had no investment in it, because who gives a shit? It's Kagan. We've seen him like once in the entire series. If Rain had reacted like it was a twist, we would have lost investment in her character. But instead, her uh, lack of reaction is more interesting. Builds a more unique character. And now she's going to carry on with grim determination through a bleak hellscape. Same. I also like that they killed off Feral in a cutscene, so that we didn't have to deal with her. Makes me wish they had never introduced her in the first place. And then, of course, one cutscene later, Ephemera announced that uh, she and Feral have a brother that we're probably going to learn more about later. But not enough to make us care. Regardless, this game clearly just hit its stride. Things have changed dramatically, and uh, it should be very interesting going forward. However, every other level has been terrible. Maybe now that they have a vision for what they want to do for the rest of the game, that will change? But we will have to wait until next time to see.